Okay, in our last lesson we successfully um, created a map uh, and using Kismet managed to spawn in a new pawn and then when we shoot the pawn with the link gun beam we swap to the pawn but unfortunately whatever we are telling the um, the old body to do at the time of the swap it continues to do and in this particular instance it was fire its gun so how do we make it so that when we swap bodies we can in fact um, stop the old body from doing whatever it was that it was doing well if we come up to kismet here is our setup uh, one way that we can um, make this work is under possess pawn we can simply check kill old pawn now if we play from here and we swap over the old pawn disappears we swap to the new body and the old body vanishes but that isn't what we wanted that isn't the uh, what the game um, description um, is that we uh, that we had in mind now there are a couple of things that um, seem like they should work like if we come into a new action and AI and we pick things like abort move or freeze or stop firing these look like they would work but they don't um, the reason for this I think is because it requires some sort of AI or controller for our old body and seeing as we've just left our old body the body is left without a controller so it can't run animations and so after a lot of trial and error and a lot of experimentation I finally came up with a way that seems to work in order to get it to work I am going to come in to the content browser and create a new UI scene the name that I'm going to give this UI scene is flush input now this is the UI scene editor and if you want to create UI scenes um, there are plenty of videos online that will show you how to create UI scenes but for the, uh, this lesson we're going to create something very simple we may uh, revisit UI scenes later on in this unit but for now all I want is a UI scene that has this checkbox enabled and that is flush input and you can see by the tooltip it says controls where the keys being held down such as when the player is firing should be cleared when this scene is opened that's exactly what we want to happen when we swap bodies we want to flush input uh, from our uh, from our player so making sure that this is checked we will uncheck some defaults such as display cursor because we don't want a cursor on screen and also we will uncheck pause game while active because we don't want this to pause the game in fact it would be best if the player never knew that this actually this UI scene actually existed here's an old UI scene from a previous video I'm just going to delete that I'm now going to save my package and we have a flush input U, uh, UI or user interface I'm just going to click on this to make sure it's selected now coming into Kismet I'm going to uh, right click and say new action UI scenes open scene and the scene that I want to open if I come down into the properties I'm going to click on the green arrow to use the Bill and Bob dot flash input scene and this hopefully should fix up our problems so I'm just going to get the um, get the scene to open before we possess this pawn and so if I bring this down pop this in here and go like that now this should stop the this should flush the input before we swap over to our new character now I don't want this scene to be open for the rest of the game and so after our pawn is possessed 
I want to close the scene again. So I'm going to come down to New Action, UI Scenes, Close Scene. Drag that down to here. Now the scene that I want to close, I could select it here, but just to make sure that we are um, selecting this scene, this uh, exact scene, I'm just going to come down to Open Scene and right click on this little triangle and create new object variable. This is the scene that we have opened. And so with that selected, I'm going to make sure that that is the scene that is closed by this close scene. Now, hopefully that should have fixed it. And in fact, in Unreal Tournament 3, that would have fixed the issue of us firing the gun. So does it work in UDK? No, it doesn't. The reason for this is that UDK is actually a lot more efficient than UT3. It took me a, uh, a little while to work this out and it was a bit of a worry because <laughs> well, this whole unit depends on this function working. But what I eventually found um, in order to fix it is if I set an activate delay here and I'll set the activate delay to 0.05 um, this delay means that by the time this scene um, uh, this scene is fully opened and the input is flushed we only possess the pawn after that occurs otherwise this is triggered the open scene the, the scene is opened at around about the same time as the pawn is possessed and the close scene comes shortly after that which means that we uh, basically go through all of this before we have a chance to flush the input. But now with that delay set, let's test it again. And there we go. He stopped firing. And just to make sure that we don't have the same problem with the uh, run-up um, activation, you'll notice that he stops dead in his tracks. So that has fixed up the, uh, the problem that we had with the, um, with the old body performing the actions that it was told to do just before the swap. So just come back into Kismet. Now we have a couple of wires crossing over here and this is starting to get a little bit long. And so um, I would like to be able to streamline this interface just just a little bit. We'll go into actually splitting this up in a uh, in a future lesson. But for now, there is one thing that I would like to do. First, I'm going to come down to the um, object variable that we have from the spawned, which is the uh, the actual spawned pawn that we have created and I'm going to give this a variable name. The variable name that I'm going to give it is Bob. Hello Bob. Now because we have given this a name we can actually use that name in order to attach um, anything that was attached to Bob without drawing a wire all the way back to this um, this node. We can do that by coming down to new variable and named variable and the name is Bob and you can see that little green tick there that means that it worked. So now I'm just going to break that connection and connect that there. I'm going to select that, control C, control V, create a new version of Bob, bring him over here and link him up there. And now Bob can go all the way back there and it should still work. Let's try that out. Yep, everything's working fine. 